Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. And three, two, one. And we're live. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and I am here with my husband, Mr. Ryan Riley. Ta-da! It's you. You're back. Hello. It's been five months, but you're back. Yes. And we're married. Show them your ring for YouTube watchers. So you need your mic to face you, babe. <laughs> okay. Now tell them how the past three months of being married has been. No, I'm kidding. It's been great. It's been an adventure been a lesson in um selflessness and realizing my selfishness mm. and uh your selfishness meaning like i'm your selfishness like i'm your wife who so- struggles with selfishness no my selfishness <laughs> meaning i am selfish <laughs> and uh, i think that's what we talked about was if you could give it a tagline it would be what was it something like serve serving mm yeah what was it to not be well not be single we're talking about single but summarizing the first mm. three months of marriage was just thinking what we realized was marriage is just is service serving yeah yeah yep sorry my mic is like falling down but this podcast is going to be a raw unedited basically q a style and so for everyone who has sent in their questions and for those who haven't and those just like <clears throat> Ashley Sanchez, who asked us a lot of questions, uh, she wrote out a lot and just things that you might want to ask some newlyweds. We are, how long have we been married? Mm, three months and yes. four days. Three months and four days. We got married on March 25th, 2023. Woo woo. And so that was an amazing wedding. Um, we'll have to do a whole other podcast, I think, on for, like I'll have to talk about what not to do when wedding planning and how to not let that consume your life because I learned a lot of hard lessons and Ryan knows he was part of that mm. and saw what it did to me and how it overwhelmed me. So I just don't want anyone who's going through that to have the same negative experience but the wedding wasn't negative and the wedding was beautiful Mm. i loved it um we saved our first kiss on our wedding day so that was amazing by god's grace and by god's grace and strength and it was just cool because everyone there kept saying like wow i've never seen a wedding like this i mean it wasn't about like the coolness of the wedding and the dancing and the party and that because everything how i want to be like It did not look how I thought it would be, and it wasn't what I thought. Like, I was so excited for the dancing and all that, and that's what I've always dreamed of. And I was like, oh, the ceremony, like, just get married and sign the marriage license. But the ceremony was my favorite. And Ryan washed my feet. I got to wash his feet. We got to sing a worship song that my mom, actually, she passed away to, which was Goodness of God. And uh, my dad got to walk me down the aisle. My brother, Morgan, Pastor Morgan got to pray for us. And then my dad did the wedding and our whole family came up and prayed for us. It was all those who are in the wedding were our siblings. So just family who are in the, you know, bridal and whatever, bride and groom. Yep. And then we ate some dinner or we (laughs) took pictures, ate some dinner, you stained your dress, we danced a lot, said (laughs) hi to a lot of people, took a lot of pictures, and then ate uh, some really good donuts, and then... Who ate donuts? You ate some, didn't you eat some of those donuts? Yeah, those are called um, beignets, but yeah. Beignets. Mm -mm. And then we wind down and headed out. It's our first time driving in a car alone, ever, so that was kind of actually... Scary. Scary. I was like a little nervous if I was going to be weird. And so we were kind of weird. And this is like, mind you, our first time ever kissing. And so our lips, the first time we were kissing, um, Ryan was joking. He's like, I feel like my lips are trembling. Like he was nervous in a cute way. I wasn't, didn't feel like that. (laughs) They were trembling. 
Yeah. And then for me, I was just so hyped, so excited. And but then we got in the car and I think we both were kind of quiet and we were just so tired. It was a long week. Um, and so it was just we'll have to talk about it. that's one of our questions, what it was like driving home and then wedding night. What are other questions? So first question here is if you could summarize the past three months of your marriage in three words. Wow. What would you say and why? Well, that's what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay, so you said... Like serving each serving. other, serving one another, something like that. Oh, yeah, those three words. Mm-hmm. Good job. Um, I would say... I don't know. I would honestly say overcoming my fears was like to summarize the past three months. I have overcome so many fears and things I would say overcoming fears, overcoming insecurity. You can replace it with any of these words. Like I think overcoming, not overcoming, but like the Lord helping even refining me in, Mm. you know, these different things. And so season of refinement, maybe that's another three words because I think I keep telling people, I feel like I've been married for five years because I've learned so much more in these three months than five years of my life or like the past five years of my life and so I love just that through marriage it just shows how I am such a selfish person I already knew that that was a joke about me but now I just see it even more so when I basically have a husband who is so spirit filled that sometimes I feel like I truly every time I do something or like get upset it's like you have such a sensitivity for the Holy Spirit that I, I feel like I'm quenching the Holy Spirit because I am in things and how I respond. And so I just think these past three months have been, first of all, it's just been my dreams. My dreams have come true. Um, I've always prayed, you know, to be, to get married and it's like finally here. I, I don't think it hit me till actually a couple of days ago, like after three months. Yeah. A couple of days ago, I was like, wow, I'm actually married. You know, I'm married to truly, the man that God had like planned. And I believe that the Lord obviously sovereign. He knew I was going to marry and it's just Mm. so thankful. And all the ladies say, they're like, aren't you so thankful for like God not answering your prayers in the past of the people I prayed for or wanted, or like I need someone who's over six foot. And like, we would joke in Mm -hmm. other podcasts. I am so thankful for my five and nine and a half husband who is not, just strong physically but spiritually just mm, strong in the lord so it's too much like we've been through so much i mean think about it before we had chaperones and weren't allowed to be alone and all this and then fully exposed Full exposure naked yeah. that was a little much but sorry if this podcast is a little much for you guys we are yeah i think it's definitely something where when you're raw people when you're uh single you know even with the lord it's i don't know i guess it's just you have somebody who you're with all the time and so in marriage it's a huge blessing but the parts that are need to be refined by the lord all become exposed like she said you're Mm. you're fully vulnerable and exposed um and so it's like you know, they see if you don't have a quiet time in the morning yeah. or if you hit the snooze button a lot or if you're messy or whatever, all those or things. Or stinky. Or just selfish and, you know, you like to do your own thing. But now there's another person who, like the Bible says, for husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So things that, you know, you want to want to do, your flesh wants to do. I mean, praise God that I don't really have any hobbies at this mm-hmm. point but uh so yeah but there's anyways but just making a commitment to not like the bible says look out for your own interests but instead look out for the interest of yeah, others don't look out for your own interests yeah yeah do not, not look only. out for your own interests not only yeah so mm. it's uh it's, it is a refining Whoa. Okay, this is all sponsored by AHA because we have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do we edit that out even though I said this is going to be an unedited raw podcast? I don't think yeah. So. 
Uh, uh-huh. Seltzer it's, water. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been an adventure. It's been a huge blessing. Mariah, the Lord has provided for me and Mariah uh, many things that I didn't even know to ask for. Yeah. So I think that God knew, like his, like it says, his ways are higher than our ways and mm-hmm. his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So that process of singleness and waiting on the Lord and mm-hmm. letting him open, you know, or lead was was hard but really necessary it's, and, and yeah. worth it. Worth the wait. If that's what people are asking, that was another question. Like, we'll get to that later. Okay, two. So, what was it? What is it like to live with each other? Because this is my first time living with anyone besides my family. Like for twenty six years, I had lived with my family, and basically in the same house my whole life. So, any pet peeves? Like, what's it like living with Mariah? Hmm. I'll start. Okay, so I'm <laughs> just kidding. Pet peeves for me would definitely be really nothing because truly I don't, I'm not saying this to be like, oh my goodness, our life is so perfect. Leaving the seat up. But that is not a big deal. I was talking about that too. I was talking about uh, communication. Oh yeah. Well, I do think that's just something if we're going to talk about, not a pet peeve, but something that we're working through, which every marriage and relationship you're working through something which ours is just how to communicate better and i wouldn't even use the word like for ryan it's probably communicating like maybe my pet peeve is sometimes he thinks inside of his head which is a great thing most people do that but me i like to think out loud and so when ryan just thinking in his head i'm like i don't know what you're thinking and so then i like to assume which is not smart and then it just gets into a fight but Ryan also is learning and it's been really good. One of my pet peeves is like, I want him to, I'm always like, babe, pray out loud. Like pray, like pray for us. So a pet peeve is like, he prays a lot, but just being able to pray out loud and to be able to share out loud, like what he's thinking because he's lived, he's been like, you know, not single, but kind of for a while and not, you've never been married before, really lived with anyone else before. So He's having to learn that because he comes, you know, from a family who they don't just share right what they think like out loud. They think about it, which is a good, good thing. But my family, we just like you think it, you say it. So just finding that balance is what we're doing Mm. right now. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, I think that's what we're working through is figuring out because also another thing, the difference between our families is that, you know, (laughs) <laughs> in Mariah's family, everything was out in the open. Mm-hmm. My family was more uh, handled quietly. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that uh, I'm not used to it. To, uh, okay, like the other day, we, and I think this is a good thing, we were at uh, Mariah's family's house, and basically something came up, and then it was, you know, kind of addressed lovingly with the whole family together. You know, everybody's not kind of started talking and chiming in and, you know, it was just, it was unusual for me. So <laughs> why is this happening in front of everyone? No, Cause Ryan thought, like quietly I, was I, like, I babe, not- are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. Are we okay? And then it, my dad's like, oh, right, let's go dinner and a show. And then we just <laughs> start talking about like what yeah. is but happening. I don't, think that, I don't think, I think that I, I welcomed him that, but just learning to, uh, yeah, just deal with conflict yeah. in a balanced way. Yeah, exactly. I and don't like conflict for conflict's sake, no. you know. But every time we have a conflict or a fight or whatever you want to call it, I truly feel like we understand the value. Mm-hmm. Not that we're like, oh, we're amazing. We've gotten so much wisdom. We understand the value of going to others for help, for like wisdom. Like, what do I do about this? Not to bash the other person. I'm not like going to a girlfriend and being like oh my goodness what do I do my husband but we go to like Morgan and Vell or just people who are wiser than us to ask for wisdom but also I Jerry. think the other thing we know yeah the, but the other thing we do is that we like understand that a solution is needed like we are a team and we are not fighting against each other the bible says you do not fight against flesh and blood but against principalities against authorities against like the spiritual realm and so uh, my fight's not with ryan my fight 
He's shadow boxing over here. My fight is against the enemy. And I, that's why praying is so powerful. Like, even though you sound like a crunchy, cheesy Christian, like, let's just pray right now. But it truly works. Mm -hmm. It works to pray when you're fighting. Because a lot of times our fights, they make no sense. They're over mm -hmm. the dumbest thing. It's because I'm not feeling well. I'm going through like hormonal things. And then I'm just irritable. And then I get really sensitive. I'm like, babe, why don't you come home at this time? I want to spend time with you. And he's out like serving with the men. And he doesn't have any hobbies. He doesn't just go party with the boys or go golfing. He literally goes to work, serves at the church, meets with men, does discipleship, comes home to me. We fall asleep. We don't watch. We don't have a TV. And we just repeat. And so for us, it's pretty, like pretty, pretty sweet. I love it. I love our simple life. It, but yeah, it's just so cool that through our fights that we draw closer at the end. Mm -hmm. Like I, mm -hmm. I encourage people on a fight, like come back together if you're married, like intimacy wise, because the Bible also says that to not, um, what does it say in first Corinthians? I think it's seven to like come together, which means intimacy, unless the enemy comes and attacks you, unless for you're both like in agreement for prayer and fasting, but to come back together because that's the enemy wants to attack godly marriages. So don't be shocked if you're getting attacked with these fiery darts or temptations mm -hmm. or like, do they love me and needing to talk? I would say instead of, oh, just communicate because you're going to hear that all the time. People are like, what's your advice? Communicate. I would say stop assuming, stop trying to read minds. And this is part of communication but more detailed, ask them what's going on. Like, and actually, you, now you told me instead of like us hashing it out and fighting for hours, let's pray. But right. I think we're learning that. Jerry was telling me like when you get married, he has yet to talk to a guy who is, you know, really excited to serve his wife on the wedding night, you know? Mm. So usually the reason why you get, or the initial thought when you get married is pretty selfish. Yeah. So I think uh, he said, when you get married, it's two ticks. It's that, that analogy. And then, uh, but when you, or when you ma get married, you think the other person's a dog and you're a tick and you want to, you know, Suck receive stuff from them. Yeah. Uh, but then you get married and you realize you're two ticks and no dog. And the only big dog is the dog upstairs Amen. and his name's God. And so I think. Jesus. Woo -hoo. <laughs> yeah. Woo <-hoo. laughs> so learning to find both of our um mm. satisfaction and filling and soul peace and wholeness in the lord and then from that position committing to serve each other mm -hmm. and because otherwise it, there can be a lot of conflicts that we've found that come up from that just idolizing each other yeah exactly all right we gotta move on because we've been spending a lot of time and What's the next one uh, the next one's going to be a few combined. It's basically about what we've been talking about, but it says in the marriage, in the marriage culture, we have what is called the honeymoon phase, um, where couples never fight, <laughs> never yell, and always get along. What has your marital experience been like, and has it always been positive? I don't yes, know. it's been perfect. Yeah. No yelling or fighting on my I end. Know. I hope we never fight. No, but I truly, never, I don't think Ryan has ever raised his voice at me or, but truly, he, no, I, was, I have. I remember. Yeah. I have done it before. But okay. I think that. I don't remember it, so it wasn't loud enough. <laughs> I remember saying this in our engagement season that I feel like even then I felt like we were already, which is might seem like saying a bad thing, but I felt like we were already moving past the. Honeymoon stage. The tinglies. Yeah. Which is weird, but... Because um, we already went, fought through things and went through a lot of hard things together. Yeah. Yeah. Iron sharpening iron. That's what that's what it, the, the fights feel like, and it's, it's like you said, we mm -hmm. get closer afterwards. But I don't know. I don't think that any of those apply to us. No. no fights, no raising the voice, no. No. I don't think we've been through the honeymoon phase. I think truly, well, maybe I would say... The, maybe in the initial when we were dating. Yeah. I think when we were first dating, I don't think we really fought. And I think we were just like, ah. But now, I think, I feel like an old married couple sometimes where I'm just like, I really see how the Lord can spiritually like mature you in a short amount of time 
if you ask for wisdom and help around you. Like seriously, mm. marriage is you need help. Like you need mm. a community. And that's why without this church family, we wouldn't be okay. Mm. I think we would be living. I think where the honeymoon phase comes, honestly, is because you isolate and no one is telling you around you like what's going on. And you're just like going on these fun dates and doing all these things. And it's just you and the person just living it up. And then you hit reality and you have people to deal with. And you have like my mom passing or what you have issues and things that come up and stuff that you have to deal with that's not fun and then mm. you're like oh this isn't fun anymore yeah, whereas like the, the best part i think about marriage is having each other to work through those things with each other is like if anything in marriage I'll, all i look at it as is like we are like he's got my back i have his truly every single time i've been down like, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. When I've been down, he's been super, super joyful and the Lord's been filling him and he mm -hmm. builds me up. Every time he's down, I'm feeling good and then I can build you up. The best is when we're both joyful. But I don't think we've really, besides like, you know, a tragedy or like losing my mom, we've never really both been down. I think the Lord has just, I'm thankful for that. But what I also, the Lord just spoke to me like today with the women um, in the, in Bible study is just like, I have truly an amazing husband where I always joke. I'm like, try to think of a Bible character that Ryan resembles. And the only person I can think of is Jesus because Whoa. <laughs> like blasphemy, no resembles. Not that you are because the Bible okay. says to be Christ, like be becoming perfect Thank you, baby. resembles. Not that he is crazy anything close, but all I'm saying is the self-control the not just freaking out, lashing out, like the fruit of the spirit that is evident in your life is crazy amazing. And the thing about it is that I could just be loving my marriage right now because Ryan is so great. But I was thinking, I was like, but what if something crazy happened to you? What if you got an accident and just got crazy and was angry all the time you know like would i be like my marriage is terrible would i still be able to say i want to be that quiet and gentle wife if mm. you even walked away and you weren't living for god you know because mm -hmm. i still have struggles with being quiet and gentle and you are so kind to me and so the lord was just convicting me i was talking to the women about today how you portray you know in our good example of jesus and how he is you know with the bride us the church and yet we reject God. Mm. We are disrespectful. And one time in a fight, yeah, Ryan was yeah. just like, I was like, I don't feel loved. I don't feel this. And he's like, well, I don't feel respected. He's like, would you talk this way to your dad? And I'm like, <laughs> no. And so how much more if Ryan isn't walking by the spirit and you're doing that, that my flesh is going to be like, I have the right to be disrespectful. I am not going to be quiet and gentle. And so I have been really convicted with that recently. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, no matter how Ryan responds, I need to be Christ-like. I need to walk by the spirit daily. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, I don't know how I got into that tangent, but I think we we're talking about fighting yeah. and honeymoon phase and all that and i think that we have gotten a lot of help and that's where i would say mm. why i love our marriage so much is because we have a community yeah it takes a village truly yeah. and like what you were saying earlier what the proverbs is is like you know two are better than one when one falls down the other can mm. pick them up and when one the one can kill a thousand two can kill ten thousand so it's not just like having the partnership is not just uh an an additive benefit mm -mm. it's an exponentially mm. you know benefit so truly I'm not multiplicative it's exponential so yeah um mm. all right so the next question is dating or courting i mean we call it courting just because dating is sometimes is like it used to be known for exchanging sexual favors back in like the early 1900s history lesson which kind of how it is now history lesson by mariah riley but courting was where you had the vision of marriage like you you didn't know you were going to marry them but that was like the end goal and so that's how it was for us i don't think we were just dating because it's like you're cute and i think this could work i was like no if this continues how I've seen you as my friend and how you've been as a man of God, I want to marry you. Mm. I don't know what it was like for you, but 
That's what I was thinking, right? <laughs> yes, I was I was courting you to marry you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was my intention. And In uh, the beginning. I think what you were saying earlier, I think it's good that you have the humility, but I think also God has bless me with you in having a wife who is like I said before better than mm. I could ask for or know to ask for just because you really seek the Lord and have a heart and f- for him and a fear of him mm. you know which I think gives you a lot of wisdom and a lot of strength and humility and uh, yeah so mm. Thanks, babe. You make me cry. Well, the question then is, dating or courting is a very different experience than marriage. What is different about it? And how has it been navigating those experiences? And I would like to add this to this question. Not add it, but just as an extra comment. For a lot of people, it isn't different. When you say that. What was the last phrase of that? It just says, how has it been navigating those experiences dating to marriage? Mm -hmm. I would say, sadly, for multiple people, whether you're not Christian or you are a so-called Christian, they are basically acting married. They're playing married couple by, you know, sleeping together, becoming one, you know, and then, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Or even just... I think another thing is just how you talk. Maybe you're like, I've never had sex with them, but just how you talk and language, maybe having quiet times like alone and Bible studies and just everything. I'm not saying there isn't a season to pour out your heart to them and that, but it just really, those things bind you. And we didn't, until we were married, we didn't really read the Bible together or study the Bible. And we also were very, we tried to be very careful with like how we talked, but um, yeah, we didn't study we the didn't Bible together FaceTime. because we had gotten oh counsel. Because it seems yeah. innocuous. It seems like it that wouldn't be a big deal, like you're doing a good thing, studying the Bible together. But some people told us, I think both her dad and my dad had both said that, you know, uh, studying the Word together, especially if you're in person, can lead to uh, funny business, you know, just sexually, you no. know. Wah, 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 wah. I don't know. Let's go. Bum, bum. Should be wah, wah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that does. that's what I was. Why? And you then when we were married, we're like, oh. Yeah. I see. I see why we didn't I do this. I see why we didn't do this. <laughs> it really is an intimate thing. Um. So yeah, I just think that that's all I would say with it because we have so many other questions. But do you have anything else with that? Just um, the differences. Yeah. There's. I think the way that, like you said, the world, way the world does it, it's not a lot of difference. Yeah. Because you're, you're what is it, testing the... What is leasing, it leasing with the option to buy. Yeah. But I think if you're doing it the Lord's way and, and walking not in sexual immorality, which means you have to set up good boundaries mm-hmm. uh, and uh, having accountability in your life and... Uh, practicing being a husband before you are a husband, which mm. means, you know, protecting purity and um, washing her in a way with the word, just like, you know, serving. But uh, but you can still date, go on dates, mm-hmm. but just group stuff. Yeah. You know, so that you're not alone and then it gets dark and then, you know, mm-hmm. like you like hanging out, so you hang out later and later and then you're tired, fatigue makes cowards of us all and then, you're, yeah. you know, it just get <laughs> It happens, you know, everybody. It happens. So just putting up good boundaries. But I think that I am very thankful for everybody in the church. Mm. I've said it before, but who helped us. who walked with us yeah. through that. Because we could, like Mariah said, we couldn't have done it without, if you guys are watching from the church, we couldn't have done it without all you guys, without yeah. Trin, who's Trin, in there. Trin so, Trin. yeah, it, uh, it was a huge blessing. Mm-hmm. Just like in marriage... You need to go to people. Yeah, and still have accountability. In the sanctuary or whatever, after church, you call your friends and say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? Or we need help? Or can you pray for me? Mm-hmm. Like, all that stuff is, um, I think, a good way to do it that's different from the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Next so question. what? You got yes. The next, question. next question says, um, many people. Okay. So this is a spicy stuff. So we have just changed. So we have young children. They don't want to listen to this. So they don't think <laughs> they should just warning you. Okay. Eight says, well, this is question. Eight. I skipped some, but it says many people in our culture make day one of marriage all about sex. Which is normal, but some people wait even a few days because of nervousness or until both people are ready. Mm. So then there's a two-part question after that. <laughs> so that was just a statement, and now I would it's say... Get personal. What? Now it's going to get now personal. Now it's going to get personal. But I would say I truly was so grateful that Ryan actually said that very statement to me. Mm. Remember that? I, I was said like, it because... Because so uh, nervous because I had no, I had never been with anyone. Yeah, I had, I, we had also heard stories about you know people who so had had that work. be that way too, mm -hmm. you know, where they just, uh, you know, so I was like, whatever happens, because I think we were feeling some pressure and nervousness of like, oh, <laughs> it's gonna happen, yeah. So just <laughs> letting it be, just saying, yeah, just like everything else in life. Lord's prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. So realizing that whatever happens was going to be good from God and we'll just take what he gives us. Yeah, and, and so. we didn't have to test drive before because we knew God was going to make it all work. We knew that God is a God of miracles and God, he created man and woman. Like that's If it didn't work right away, then it would work later. Exactly. And so and the did. next question is did you guys talk about this day before the wedding? Yes. Yes, but that was kind of not the best. Yeah, I think we should have been more careful. I will say that I think for me personally, it was really good to ask other ladies questions. I would listen to this one podcast, but then when I started it getting like a little too much for me, like a little arousing, I would have to confess that. Right? I would have to confess that to the ladies. I'd confess it to Ryan and say, like, I can't listen to this stuff anymore. It was mm -hmm. like too much. Mm -hmm. But I was so grateful for it because it was kind of like a whole anatomy lesson on my own body that I didn't even know. And uh, for men, because by God's grace and strength alone, because of my parents and the protection they gave me and the prayers over me, I had never seen a male part before. Like I'd never seen like, pornography by god's grace and strength so that is like really really weird like most people that is not something they i mean they're exposed to it and it, they're like abused and all this stuff so i i was just grateful but yeah i was like nervous I'm like i don't know like i mean you understand like because i did take anatomy and stuff like that but i i think for me it was kind of like I was at times feeling insecure, like, oh man, I have to be this like one who knows all this and stuff. But I like how people say it's like, no, because you shouldn't be all like acting like, I'm sorry for the words, but you shouldn't be acting like a stripper and all these inappropriate things and be what the world says is sex and perverted mm -hmm. because that's what the world has tainted it and made it seem not that you can't be like, I'm going to use the word sexy and cute for your husband and get like all these things and look cute. But it's just the issue nowadays is you always need more and more and more where mm. it's like, let the, what is it? The white, your wife's the breasts of your youth, like your wife satisfy you. Basically you don't need much. You just need two married, married bodies that male and female together, you know? And so I was just so grateful that women at the church I was able to talk to. One thing I would say is it still is a little taboo thing in church. So I would like to one day do a podcast more about, or just meet with younger ladies who are about to get married or have questions about this, because I don't think I really had that. Maybe it's just because my mom was not here, you know? I think people helped me, but still, when you try to ask questions, you're like, la, 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 like I can't talk about sex. I'm like, I've talked to multiple other young women, and you want to know where they get their information then? They get it from um, terrible magazines. They get it from the internet. 
uh, all these places, men get it from pornography. Do you want that? Like, I'm asking you guys out. Do you want that? Do you want your children and them to be getting it from perversion, from sex trafficking, from all these things? Mm. No, you want them to get it from where it should be. Like Song of Solomon was written by even single people and people who were like in the body of Christ, you know? And so for us just saying, oh, it's so gross, God created it. So I'm only saying that because I'm so thankful that we were able to talk about it before. And I think we talked about it the Uh, week of the wedding, but I would say, yes, okay, correction. I would say it would have been better to talk about it more with those who are doing premarital with you and like having it controlled setting than alone, you know, Uh, We never FaceTime or anything, so nothing like that happened, but just, like, on the phone, just talking about it, because then you are excited about it. Like, your body does get aroused, and you have to flee that. So I think that's what we would say. I would say, yeah. Of our whole, like, It's good to talk about it for girls with women who you you trust and who are married and who know. Yes. (laughs) And for guys, also the same with their husbands or with their... uh, other guys in the church and stuff are not, not, don't not believe that in kind of church. Marriage, okay. So, but I think, yeah, it is good to talk about it before, but I would disagree in that I don't think it's good to talk about it with each other. No. Yeah. That's because very that's, true. I don't think that's necessary. No. And it just, cause like he's been saying, it ends up working out the long run. I think it just opens doors to get your mind running. Yeah. That's what we experienced. You know, we talked about it a week before. And I think also the other thing I would the not week recommend. Of, yeah, it's not good. The week of, yeah. The other thing I would not recommend is looking, researching stuff on your own on the internet. Did you That's, do that? No, you, no, you did that. <laughs> but I'm I just, did? Yeah. With, with like the podcast. And yeah. just reading, uh, like, you know, mm, like researching. And so not like bad stuff, but. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? But I would just say that I think that is also an example of things where it can, you know, you, you, you just, you keep going deeper and then it starts, your mind starts going. And so I'd say be with other people, have it be an open discussion with people yeah. who you respect in the church. Not by yourself, yeah. Because it is something yeah. that is so beautiful in marriage, but outside of marriage, that's all you want to do and all you want to think about. But when you're in marriage, the enemy has attack where it's like, no, don't do that. And especially too busy. Yeah. And and I, I would say like for me, just being vulnerable, it was something that was very, it was very hard for me. Like, because I knew that, you know, with his past, he, he had before. So I'm thinking like, oh man, like he knows what to do. I don't know what to do. And like, I want to be ready and prepared, but I would say I did not need to be ready or prepared or any of that. I, we did not need to talk about it because it's not as difficult as I even thought it would be. Like, I just, women overthink things and that's what I did. And just saying mm-hmm. it now and looking back, I'm like, we, even though it was fun to kind of think like, oh, do you want me to wear lingerie? Do you Like just talking about this thing seems fun, but really you can talk about it on your honeymoon. And if you need to buy lingerie and you didn't, and whenever he doesn't want you, you talk about it then, but you don't need to do it before. Yeah. That's a tip that I would give and say. Yeah. And is, praise is God Song it didn't go any farther for us, but it could have if we kept Song continuing of, it. Song of Solomon says that it's the, uh, I think three times he says, you know, do not awaken love before his time. Exactly. Uh, and then whatever First Peter what, 4.12 says, mm-hmm. flee anything that stimulates youthful lust and then song of solomon also says oh no that's uh, oh in second, second timothy, timothy 2 22 yeah so then uh song of solomon also says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine so just be just always test the spirits like paul says uh test the spirits and see is the fruit of what i'm experiencing like you it was fear mm-hmm. you know is it god God directed or not, and so yeah, if it's fear, then just take it to the Lord and you know trust that He will work it out. Yeah, exactly. He, did. he worked it out. He though. worked it out. Yes, He did. Thank you, Jesus. It was worth the wait. All right. So, um, it says, "How did you both feel and think about sex, intimacy? Like, 
basically the question is like how was it was it like wow that was a question um it was great i mean how i felt about it was just the joke before i was like i don't know how this is gonna work and god will work Mm -hmm. it out he did and what i would say it was so beautiful and the the coolest thing is that you're just growing in it and every single married couple who tells me who's been married for years like it just keeps getting better and when i hear that i'm like how like i'm so blessed i'm so thankful like and i only give that even to god with waiting like i don't think we would be as blessed if we didn't and if we would continue to you know like fudge on things and like oh, let's get as close as we can. But I think even with our past of things, like for me, another big word, I know this is like, oh my goodness, she said it, but like past with like masturbation and stuff, I really think it does mess with you Mm -hmm. because if you're teaching yourself, yeah, and then for you, I think it makes it where you're like, oh, this, I know how to feel that pleasure in this way. And, but you're supposed to feel that with your spouse. And so I had to work through that even in the first, especially like a couple of weeks in marriage, like the beginning, I was like, oh man, like if I didn't do that, you know, it would be so much better. I was just feeling so much, I guess the enemy was attacking shame. me with shame. Cause I know I'm guilty, I'm like a sinner, guilty. But I think it was just the attack of, I know I've never been with anyone in that. And it's not like I did anything too extreme or crazy with it ever but yet i still the bible says like to not arouse love before it's time like if your body's starting to prepare prepare for sex and you're feeling that feeling whoever it's happening it's wrong it's a sin and so even if you're like i'm just real it's just release i'm not less like i will say it makes me so mad when people say you can do it if you're not lusting i would make that justification in my mind because i truly wouldn't like i wouldn't be thinking about it i just anyway So that's where I think that you can't make that excuse. You know, it still just isn't healthy for your marriage. It really isn't. And so praise God, he really delivered me from that. I think kind of fast. I mean, it felt like that afterwards you prayed over me a lot and helped me through that. And I'm so thankful to God for that. But I would just say, if you're struggling with that now, before you get married, before you get in a relationship, Mm deal with your addiction like get rid of that like we both were able to do that and i think that really helped um yeah, and I so i just for, think i would encourage that for people i think what she what you said deal with your addiction and for guys mm. if you are struggling with you know porn and masturbation or just masturbation or or things with sexual morality with women i would say today's the day of salvation Amen. so stop yeah. and uh get help you yeah. know, go to somebody who, because there is hope. I mean, God, uh, you know, helped m- deliver me from that and uh, it w- continues to help me walk in purity. Mm-hmm. And not that you don't get attacked, but, you know, y- he gives us the strength to to, wa- to hold up that shield of faith. Uh, but yeah, just get help. Go to go to church if you're not going to church. Yeah, uh, receive Jesus into your life um, and Lord. ask Him to help you. And then go to other people who you see who are walking in purity mm-hmm. and ask for accountability. And then just be willing to do whatever it takes to cut it out. Because I've seen yeah. uh, my past in my life, and you know my sin in the past negatively impact my marriage and my in our intimacy mm-hmm. and i see it impact mariah even though it's not current it still impacts mm-hmm. you because it's it's and i wouldn't say it attacks our intimacy like in the act of intimacy i would just say it's come up over time yeah though, it's like more of like times. insecurity afterwards in the talks throughout i don't think it has affected if if that's what you're saying like our intimacy you know what? in that like the freedom of intimacy because yeah, you have no. dealt with it. No, yeah, like that's there is praise God for that. I don't it's think it has. Good to get a season of yeah. singleness and deliverance from this because, like God says in His Word, He says, "Do not." Paul says, "Do not be transformed, no, conformed to the patterns of this world, but yeah, be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind." And Christ washes us with the water of His Word, and He heals us. And uh, so, 
Just like you I were think, supposed to wash me, and you do. Yeah, the word. I'm trying. I'm getting better by yes. God's grace and strength. But I think that that process of time just with the Lord and seeking Him is uh, really important because God is able to help wash. You know, a lot of that pass away. You know, it's gonna be attacked. Like I said, and come back. Yeah, but to the day you die, you'll get tempted, but you don't have to give into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he does give you, he doesn't give you maybe your virginity back, Mm. but like what somebody said, he does give you your purity back. Amen. Because it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And God changes our hearts of stone and gives us hearts of flesh. So it's, uh, he's, he's merciful and wonderful to do that, Mm -hmm. you know, but, and so even if you're struggling with that intimacy now, I think that there's hope to continue to s- seek purity and amen and god honors those who honor him so amen i think i think that will bless they make a miracle work i don't know why it made me Stars think of that keep light in the darkness. darkness we like to sing together too especially the song he's better um, than i am <laughs> his name is jesus by jeremy riddle we one time played it in the car like turned it up to 30 and we're like screaming it and it felt like we were in heaven you know just with all the angels and all the saints i thought about a different rock sign that is this a rock sign no this means no this is don't do that that's like the devil Satan, horns. but this means i love you yeah See, so i was thinking I about this like if this could be like this was you. the sign for the last jesus revolution i was thinking about this would be the yes. sign, like holding it up to god yep exactly you know i love you yep i love you lord and yeah. i lift yep all right, we're going to start a band next year. The Rai Rai Show. No, <laughs> not the Rai Rai Show, the Rai Rai Band. But um, so we've run out of time, but we can do a whole other podcast on, you know. Is there any more all the fun pressing thing. questions? Uh, the the only other one time. was thoughts. Well, it says um, basically it's about insecurities. Any insecurities or things that have come up since being married mm. um or that or do you have a confidence in marriage insecurities are big big um big in relationships like oh, big yeah. cause of conflict yeah um, especially think, for women like the other day okay so mm. i told this to somebody yesterday but uh <laughs> so another example of god blessing me with a woman who loves the lord and uh, we were heading home from church, and Mariah starts praying because we kind of watched a scary, scary-ish movie. It was about sex trafficking, but um, and this guy who's working to set people free, but mm-hmm. it's still kind of scary. And so I wanted to pray, but then she started praying, praise mm-hmm. all the way home, and I get insecure because mm-hmm. I started thinking like, oh, I should have prayed. You know, I'm mm-hmm. the man. I should be leading, and also selfish. I wanted to pray, so... She noticed something was wrong and said, what's wrong? And then I was like, oh, I just kind of wish you would have let me pray. Mm. And so, which is obviously wrong. You know, it's, I should be praising God that I have a wife who wants to pray for, you know, can pray for 20 minutes. And so I think that that's a wonderful thing and, and I was wrong, but, uh, anyways, so I think (laughs) insecurities like that can hide in relationships and they've hidden it in ours, but. Uh, through prayer, God can reveal them, and and uh, I love how the Lord helps us deal with our insecurities by mm-hmm. replacing insecurity is just a lie from the enemy that we're believing. Yeah, and so when we replace it with His Word, it helps to secure it. Yeah, there's no insecurity. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for me, a lot of it's been physical because my first time being fully exposed to someone. So uh, it was hard because I was like experiencing, I've been having like a lot of like things of like bloating, my stomach hurting and things like that, figuring it out. And so I'm like, babe, I just don't feel good. And I don't feel like, and I haven't been able to like work out like I wanted to. So I like, I didn't have the wedding bod I wanted and all that. So I just think it was just like really hard for me 
going into marriage knowing like, oh, my body in the past was a lot better and you didn't get to see that, but I want you to see that. And so mm. that's where I think women get really attacked, especially if you have, then start having kids. I would say do your best to still continue to look as good as you can for your husband till the day you die. Mm -hmm. Not that you need to get like all these, I don't know, special treatments and you don't have to get all these, uh, what are they called? When they get, people get like. Facials? No, like implants and things like that. You don't need those. Liposuction. But I think it is important to, you know, live a disciplined life. You know, we've been trying to eat, but I've been trying to stay away from gluten and dairy because my stomach's been hurting and we don't really work out a lot. But the other day we we're like, let's do a hundred squats. And so <laughs> we did that. And so it's just been fun to be able to help each other out. And when I feel insecure, he can, you know, encourage me and just tell me how beautiful I am. And I'm like, the other day, I'm like, you only say that because you're my husband. <laughs> And I said, well, really, all you need is your husband and God to believe that. It's true. And I was meaning it of like, maybe you don't actually think it, but that's what you have to say. And he's always like, no. But yeah, I think your job that gorgeous. Thank you, baby. But I was just very blessed to have a husband who encourages me. And I want to do my best to, you know, look good. But it says bodily discipline is of some value. It's a value. But spiritual spiritual discipline is for this life and the life to come and so just and how also, that well, is what we're really about what kind of beauty women should have mm -hmm. quiet gentle spirit yeah not all the jewelry and all the fine braided stuff. hair and yeah yeah and so i'm grateful that he loves me with no makeup on oh, and yeah. baggy clothes that's how my that's how my baby likes me so i like it but also he likes it when i dress up and cute um so anyway mm -hmm. it's just been really cool to have these three months with finally get to be alone with you um and now i can truly say i would have waited seven more years for you truly wow. yeah because not that it wouldn't have been torturous and been hard and i don't recommend that <laughs> yeah but that's too long no don't do that but i do think that god can give you the grace and strength to go through anything mm. um, with help. So again, going back to community, church, having accountability. That's the only way we're here today. It's not because Mariah and Ryan are so disciplined. Mm. We ain't. We're not disciplined in our own strength. But God has helped us, people around us. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. From the oh, bottom yeah. of our hearts, we're so blessed and grateful because of yeah. you guys. Amen. And we love you. Love you guys. And, and I love you. I love you always forever um but i love god more and that's why i love that we <laughs> another kidding. insecurity no, yeah oh <laughs> no he loves that i love god more and i love that he loves god more than me no idolatry praying against that. jesus mm -hmm. um so yeah the last one was about are there babies in the future we're praying stay about tuned it. All right. Well, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram. Check out our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations where you guys can send in your questions. We like to do Q&As and all that stuff. So send in your questions. Any guest speaker you would like us to have or someone on our podcast, mm -hmm. you guys can let us know in our website or you can go to our website and put a request form uh there it's calvaryconversations.com also this is a listener supportive podcast so if you would like to support calvary conversations you guys can do that in the description below that says donate we love you guys so much we'll do more podcasts on our relationship most important is your relationship with god so Amen. seek him love you guys god bless Woo. Hey!